two, one. Hello, everybody. This is indeed Fishbow ninety six here for the Crash Cast as always. With uh, here we got Stowe and uh, Fancy Dancy Man is too busy spanking it. This be here now, joking. <laughs> and and sadly, we don't want to know what he's spanking. He's sorry. Well. <laughs> I'm moving the, the, the computer closer to our table here. We are in Burger King, of course, in one of my places I work. Yes, but sadly, we can't have the king with us. He's apparently not here. We've been lied to. We've been lied to, yes. Uh, sorry about uh, for some of you guys who wanted to continue to hear the echoing madness. That was uh, existed in the previous uh, post that we tried to do. This is the true flagship post, and we are short guy already. Yep. Off to a great start for a new series. So, uh, another thing in news: everybody down in Texas for the uh, Brony Arches studio down there has been fired yet again. And this time, more than just fired, but licensing pulled. After the uh, huge Donald Trump post made by, who was it? Not Lyanna, who was the other guy? I don't know. It wasn't Red, surprisingly enough, it was not the guy with Redneck Welch in his name. It was actually somebody else. Ah. Uh, Damn it! I forgot his name already. I just fired the guy. I don't even know his name. Uh, wow. I, I think that's in the process of firing people. You're not supposed to remember. Maybe. But needless to say, uh, the Brony Arches site is down for uh, an indefinite amount of time until everything can be reorganized yet again for, uh, you know peace of mind for a lot of people. So, uh, we have over here Stowe sitting here playing Magic the Gathering on his computer. Yeah, of course. Of course. Uh, nice. Halloween Whopper is good, guys, by the way. Uh, so, who was it that I was talking to? Uh, I usually have these amazing stories, and then I forget them the moment I hit the record button. The moment I hit the record button, I forget. Let's see. Oh, yeah. So, you got, you got anything, man? Uh, cause I have not this really. I mean, we're kind of waiting for... <laughs> He's gonna be rushing in here, going, "Sorry, I'm late. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry." He's gonna be flipping out really. So, so, uh, <laughs> God damn it. I have a feeling this is going to be one of those series where I'm going to have to, like, bring everything to the top myself, because people are going to be like, this is not, you know, this yeah. I've heard of, and, yeah. I'm not fans. They won't do anything. <laughs> I, I, thought, I thought it was funny. So, uh, my, my last performance that I did, because I'm, I'm, yeah, you know I'm going on tour, and so do everybody else who's probably listening to right now. Uh, they know the fact that I'm going on tour uh, next year for 2016, but uh, my last performance was actually at TrotCon, and I know, like, that's July, and, you know, Nightmare Nights is coming up, and there are a couple people who would love to see me again at Nightmare Nights, but I am not going, sadly. Uh, but during TrotCon, I was told I should get a Facebook page by uh, one of the people out in the crowd, and he walks up to me, and he says, you should get a Facebook page. I was like, you're not the first person to tell me this. I was like, but since you told me in person, I'm going to go do it. So I get a Facebook page, and it has been three months later. I only have 22 likes. <laughs> it's, 
Is this gonna be like one of those things? I've gotta let people know that this exists. Like maybe. Just. I mean, wow. I don't know. I think that's one of the reasons why the internet exists. Maybe it's it, it's one of those do uh, DIY things. Well, or, or or we can do this. We can totally use MySpace. <laughs> yes, because MySpace is totally active. I know it's bustling with activity. Yes. Yes. I actually never got a MySpace like. I, I thought it was very, very sad. <laughs> I, I, I thought about it, and if I would have done it, I probably would have felt like Piccolo. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Vegeta, I think the green guy is very lonely. <laughs> what makes you think that, Nova? He's checking his MySpace. <laughs> <laughs> it's 2015, Vegeta. He shouldn't be checking my space. <laughs> I mean, nonetheless, it's it. Huh? Nothing. Not. Um, <laughs> so, uh, I picked up the uh, the uh, battle for Zendikar. Ultimate sacrifice box thing, Majigger, whatever. The the uh, event deck, which I'm just gonna put in my bag right now, with like several thousand other items in my bag. Uh, you participated in the uh, Battle of Zandikar. Uh, uh, release. Release. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, pretty awesome, despite a lot of negative views. During spoiler season, but uh, that's another matter. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was pretty good. Sadly, I thought the uncommons and commons were a lot better than the rares. So I don't know what's up with that. I just thought it was kind of a scumbag move. Uh, it was going to be one of the few times you guys hear about me talk bad about the Sage's shop. I thought it was kind of a scumbag move of... Uh, what uh, uh, the owner was doing, going around and, you know, scalping cards off people? Well, they, as a company, they have to make sure they get at least two, two of each card before the first day of the release. So they kind of have to do that, and sometimes they actually uh, pay more than they want to. So it's a nay and yay, I guess. Oh, okay. So, one of the kids I was sitting with, okay, because, you know, my foot messed up and I just couldn't walk home that day. Uh, the kid I was sitting with, I can't remember, you know, you know, the, the hand guy. The guy with the hand on his forehead. The, oh, with the yeah. white thing. Yeah, um, he, okay, he's like 12 or something, right? Yeah. He found a $150 card. Yeah, the treasures. Yeah, he got the uh, what was it, the blood crypt card? And then what happened was was uh, the owner walked up to him and just told him, "I'll give you fifty dollars store credit," and then kind of cornered him about it. Uh, of course, I yeah. didn't help too much because I was joking around saying, "You could pay for my tournament fee." Yeah, I was probably when I have done. I I yeah I know I wasn't that I I was I was probably. I wasn't helping very much, but for the fact that I, he did that to the kid. Yeah. That's just, that, that is a tad bit of a scumbag. That's why in my shop we don't buy cards. <laughs> we don't buy, like, the individual cards, because it, it winds up into this little thing of, am I going to rip this guy off, or am I going to be good with him, and then wind up having hurting later for uh, money. Yeah. I mean, I can I can kind of understand from no, a business no. aspect, but, but why couldn't he have offered him more than fifty dollars? Oh well, of, like let's see. Third, I hope the issue about that card is sure it was an expedition, but it then reprinted three, two times prior prior to that, and black red isn't really that 
popular. Yeah. Good and modern. If it was blue and any type of blue, it would have been more than the 100 it's going for now. Because I bought a crypt they're going for about. Actually, 150, because we no. looked it up. No. Really? All the ones with blue is going to do 150 to 300. Blood Crypt is going for about 95. So, he got about a decent price for it, but he should have waited till the whole pre release was over. Then, did, uh, you know, mention treasures at the end of their pre release instead of during. Because during it, the shop owner is supposed to be. Make sure everything goes well, not bugging the customers about what they pulled. That's bad ethical, I guess, uh... Business? It's, it, it is a tag. Deck building ground, I guess. Because you're interrupting them while they're trying to build it. Yeah. Would. I mean, that's... waited until after the tournament was over. That's what bothered me a bit, was just that... That right there. Uh... Um... So, for some of you guys who are down in Texas and are a big fan of the uh, uh, Gatesville Geekly shop, uh, we are working towards getting a physical store yet again. Uh, as you guys know, we hit that slow period and we had to shut down because we could not afford utilities. Uh, which was, that was our only problem there, was we couldn't afford utilities. But we had stock out the wazoo, and so until we would, we would love to move back into the building, other than the fact that we don't have a restroom, or because I'm not going to sit foot and wait for extravagant amounts of time in a place that doesn't have a bathroom that works. Yeah. I forgot my bike over at the same shop. <laughs> okay, you can talk to them. I'm going to be back. I gotta go get my. Okay. And then I have to go again during the show. Okay, I'll be right back. Yeah. Entertain them. Um. Yeah. Well, I guess I uh, hope your Friday is going well and such. Um. Nothing really happened in here. Just uh, being a busy college student. Uh. Yeah, that's about it. Um. So. I, so I guess uh, just leave a comment or something like that and just tell us something awesome that happened during your Friday. Because it is near, uh, getting near Nightmare Night and we all know that it's going to be pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'm just uh, here playing Magic Online and uh, having a grouch about the rotation schedule due to, um, Technically, uh, <laughs> the, my, the cards my opponent is playing is uh, technically cycled out. But since it's Magic Online, the actual rotation doesn't happen until next week. So, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about all that's happening. <gasps> Actually, I'm But <sighs> yep. Well. <coughs> <coughs> 
Well, yeah, I had to use rushing right now. Come on, okay. Okay, somebody's in there right now. Okay, well, I should have used the one over at the Sage of Shock. Probably. Yeah, you oh. shall forever be in turmoil. How long will that guy take? I don't know. Hopefully he didn't eat any, uh, anything I didn't agree with him. Oh, the Whopper's good. Really good. Yeah, that's, that's why they sell. What? Have you not said anything this whole time? I've been talking. I just... What have you been talking about? I uh, just... stuff, I guess. <laughs> Alright. So, once again, you haven't heard the story Alex has. Nope. The, the, the reason why I will never let my... let one of my friends, uh... My friend Vlad never let him choose the convention. Okay. We got okay. So I okay. So like when you go to a convention with me, I tell you every little detail about the convention. There is nothing that's gonna shut me up about it if I'm taking you with me. Okay. That's what you 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 just never forget with me. So. One of my friends said, oh, let's go to this one in Dallas. Doesn't tell me anything about it other than where to go. That's it. And the date. And I should, I probably should have Google searched the date in Dallas, what was going on. And this was, this was hilarious. So we go to, we go to Dallas. And, uh, you know, I, I, there's, we show up at the hotel. We go to Dallas, we show up at the hotel. There's no signs up whatsoever. There's nothing about it. We go up to the registration guest, uh, you know, the, the registration table. And, you know, I'm always, when, back then, we used to go as guards all the time. So a lot of conventions knew that we were, you know, that was what we did, was we went and we were actually really good guards. And so... What happens is, is uh, we go to the we go to the convention, and uh, you know we walk up to the desk. The lady looks at us, and she looks at me, especially because for what's going on, I don't look like a guy who would be doing this. And she just looks at me. And she's like, "Are you sure you're here for the uh, the convention?" I'm like, "Yes." I'm like, "We're here uh, to be guards at the convention." And she's like, "Okay, head over to the uh, owner's office, and he will brief you on everything you need." I'm like. What? <laughs> I'm looking. At, I'm looking at the lady, and I'm like, "What do you mean by brief?" She's like, "You'll you'll understand when you get there." And so we we walk in there, and you know he he goes over. He's like, "Okay, this is a very private event." He's like, "This is, you know, you understand that this is a very private, very personal matter for some of these people for this convention, all that." And I was like, "Okay." He's like, "So he's like, here's your taser, here's your baton." I look at him already. I, I mean, I've been handed a baton before, but the taser kind of was a little much. I was like, why? He's like, you'll know it when you need it. And then he's like, okay, now go down. He's like, go down to, I think it was like room 230 something. And he's like, eh, for your fitting. And I look at him, and I'm like, fitting for what? And he says, your first suit. Just, just flat out says, 
he's like, yeah, you're fitting for your fursuit. Now look at my friend, and I'm like, you did not. <laughs> I take him outside, and I go, Vlad, what are we doing? Why are we here? And he just looks at me, and he's like, it's, it's a furry convention. <laughs> and I'm like, what? Why would you bring me here? I was like, and he's like, you're a brony, there's not that much of a difference. I'm like, there's a huge difference. I'm like, first things first, this is the art style. It looks way different. <laughs> I'm just looking at him. I'm like, you did not bring me to a furry invention. I am going to kill you. And I walk in, I'm like, can I opt out of the suit? And he, he just like, he's like, yeah. He's like, what would you like in exchange? And I was like, well, what do you got? He's like, I can give you $200. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, it's about as how much we're paying for these suits. So, I mean, okay then. I'm fine with that. So I'm just sitting there, and I go, and I go ahead, I take the uh, thing, they give me a shirt, and that's it, and a badge, and the badge has a number on it. Does not have anyone's name. So, there's apparently like 15 guards, and they give them random numbers, so it makes it seem like there's a large number of guards there. Yeah. Or some crap. And so, the first day, I told them I do not want to be anywhere near the convention floor. Put me at a door, and that's it. I was like, I will guard a door. I'm like, I'm not going to do anything else. And so, I'm sitting at the door. You know, it's a normal day. I'm, you know, my friend is in the suit next to me, and I think it was my friend, but all the suits looked exactly <laughs> the same. Like, not, not kidding, they were all exactly the same. Yeah. And so I'm just, I, I'm just looking over, and I couldn't remember my friend's badge number. If I could remember that, I probably would have had, like, a better time, because I didn't talk to anybody throughout this whole convention. And so I'm sitting here talking to him. Well, I'm not talking to him. I'm, you know, talking to uh, one of the guys who's walking up. He's a, he's a brony. He's like, yeah... You know, this and this. we're all talking about, you know, usual brody shit. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, you know, head cannons and all that stuff. So we're we're sitting there, we're sitting there, and it gets to the end of the day, and we head back to HQ. You know, and they hand us walkie talkies. They're like, here, we just got these in today, and so they hand us the walkie talkies and everything. And they're like, and your room keys. And so, all the guards are on the top floor of the hotel. For some reason, you know, if an emergency happens, the elevator's broken, we have to go down six flights of stairs. <laughs> if, if I, I really questioned the whole integrity of this convention, and whether or not I was having a nightmare. And so it comes around to the second day, my friend's holding his head next to him, and you know, he's walking down the stairs, and I'm talking to him, I'm chewing him out. Like, I am furious at him. We get down the stairs, we get down to the, uh, you know, the bottom of the stair, well, not the bottom of the stairs, but halfway down the stairwell, we start hearing noises. Oh, great, for a while. Huh? For a while. <laughs> oh, we just kept going. I, I I just looked at him. I'm like, what the hell was that? He's like, I don't know. We're like, okay. We go down a little bit further. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, it was just two people, and it was a it was a cat and a fox, and they were just going at it. And my friend puts on his hat head, uh, head and just pats me on the shoulder and says, "You go ahead, deal with this." Great. <laughs> I radio HQ and I'm like, hey, uh, we have we have a situation going Wait, on in the stairwell. We have a cat on a fox here. Yeah. What, what should I do? Yeah, <laughs> that's really that's really what it sounded like. Thirty minutes later, we get because this this is an ordeal that happens over a period of three hours. Thirty minutes later, they just tell me to call the police. I call the police, and you know these people are still going at it for some. reason. I call the police. Police come and show up, and they stop. <laughs> and they, not the, not the guys, the police officers stop and look at me and says, this is not our problem. They're like, we're going to call some professionals. Animal control shows up. <laughs> I am not kidding. They call. I'm just, I'm like, oh my god. So for the next 
hour and a half. The police and the animal control are arguing over whose job this is, and they will not let me leave because all the other guards look like the same. And so I'm the only one they can recognize. So they just... They couldn't trust them. And so I'm sitting here going, oh, crap. So I'm stuck at the bottom of the stairwell. For, yeah, it was like, you know, we get all this over with. Uh, what happened when it ended was when the uh, police officers just told the animal control guys to give them the choker thingies and put them in the car. They put them in the car. The only one. So I'm assuming the whole way back up, they continued. Yep. Because it just seemed to be... Because when they were pulling them apart, they were trying to go out of the car. I mean, they, they were putting a lot of effort into getting <laughs> laid. And I'm just... I'm just like, what? what? I get done. I walk over to HQ. I toss them my badge. And I told them I'm not leaving my hotel room the rest of the weekend. I was like, I am calling my parents. And they are coming to get me. <laughs> and I look over at Vlad. And I'm like, and you're not my friend anymore. <laughs> I went back upstairs. <laughs> I just, I could not, I could not believe that crap that I went through that day. I told my friend I'm never letting him choose the convention ever again. And to this day, I, I yeah. Yeah. Makes it even worse, one of the guys who's supposed to be on our podcast is a bird. <laughs> It, it's sad. It really is. And then there was this other time. Uh, you know who Draw Ponies is, right? Yeah. Okay. So, Draw Ponies is one of my friends. And, you know, me, him, uh, Blitz117. I, I can't remember. All I call him is he's a... Uh, I know his, like, last name is Lopez. So I just call him. He, he drives around in a big old truck. I mean... He's, he's he's a Mexican. I I call him my Mexican. He calls me his white guy. <laughs> we we make jokes about that all the time. And so it was uh, during Nightmare Nights. I, I have this list of stories that happened in Nightmare Nights. Nightmare Nights was probably like one of the most eventful conventions for me ever. Uh, so I'm I'm hanging with Draw Ponies, Tori. Uh, Tori is like. Everybody calls him the super brony down there. Like, he, he is, like, if you want to talk about a brony who is dedicated to the fandom and who is, you know, he will tell you about the politics of it. He's wow. the guy. He okay. is the guy. It's like, it's like freaking game over with, like, Spy Kids. He's <laughs> the guy. <laughs> he runs around and, like, his, his, he has this leather jacket that's just covered head to toe in pony crap. <laughs> and he wears a ZZ top hat with a horn and ears, and then he has wings coming out of his vest. I mean, he literally goes around like that. That's his, that's him on a normal day. He sounds like a blast. He works at a pension institute as a guard. <laughs> <laughs> I know him because we used to do the guard circuit together, and, you know, I knew him pretty well. And so he calls me, he's like, hey, we're at Genghis. He's like, uh, he's like, we need a designated driver. We know you have a permit. I'm like, okay. I walk over there. They buy me food and everything. They're just, they're just looking at clop on their phones out in public. I'm just looking at them. I'm like, guys, really? They're like, yeah. I'm like, god damn it. Yes. Not like someone would randomly walk around like, what? And look at it. I'm like, why, why is there a horse and why is it drawn like that? What's happening? <laughs> I, think, I think the one that I remember the most is one of Celestia. She's like, yeah. She's very predominantly displayed. Uh, so. And she probably has a big... Well, she probably has a cake lunch. We, we, know, we know how Celestia loves her cake. I don't know. That's good. Dear God. Yep. <laughs> I just went from one to... So, we're over there... And, uh, so, they took, they took Blitz's truck. So there's not much room in there in the first place. And they just tell me, they're like, hey, we need you to drive us back to the hotel. I'm like, it's three blocks away. Why didn't you walk? <laughs> they're like, we didn't feel like it. And so we're sitting there, I'm like, okay, well, why don't you introduce to me everybody? Because there's a, there's a fuckload of people. I'm surprised they fit in his truck in the first place. 
And, you know, there was room for that many people. Adding one more, somebody would have to be in the back. And so we're sitting there talking to everything. Oh, we, go, we eat, you know, all that. It's a normal, you know, kind of thing. And then we go, and then, like, I, they were like, we thought you drove up here. I'm like, no, I walked. You guys knew I had a permit, right? And, you know, Tori's sitting up front because he's the only one closest to sober. And everybody else is drunk in the back. And then, draw ponies. Oh my goodness. We're like, where, where there's like one person's gonna have to sit in the back of the truck. Draw ponies is climbing up the back as everybody's arguing. And we are thud. <laughs> he's laying down like this, with his arms spread. And he's like, I'm ready. My body is ready. I'm just like, oh my god. I'm like, let, let me just get you guys back to the hotel. <laughs> We drive back over the Crown Plaza and everything. And we run into Dusty Cat. And Dusty Cat's like... Dusty Cat is... He's not drunk. But Dusty Cat is talking with Larson. And Larson's drunk. So he basically became like, drunk. Yeah. Uh, like, like Dusty Cat comes, walks up. And he looks over at me. And he's like, I didn't know you drive. And I was like, I don't. And he's like... He's like, wait, why, why'd you drive, me, drive those guys here? I'm like, I'm the closest to a designated driver they can get. He's like, well, who do you got with us? And the draw ponies comes out of the back and says, I rise! And falls out of the truck. And I'm just like, oh my god. I'm like, you guys are drunk. Bad. Like, it's horrible. I'm like, I'm just gonna go back to my hotel room. It is one in the morning. I go to the hotel room and you, you know Evergreen Network, right? You know some of the people that are in it. Uh, oh, yeah, I've seen them. Index. Yeah, I know which one is Index. Yeah, Index, I know him as well. So, like, I I, I I met him over Twitter, and then we hung out one day, and then we went to Fiesta Equestria, and then Nightmare Nights. He was apparently, like, one room above me, because I, I was in a different hotel room. I was in the Marriott next door. There's the Crown Plaza where the event was being held, and then there's the Marriott, and I'm in the Marriott, right? And I'm looking over, I'm looking, I'm just in the hotel room by myself, and I start to hear noises coming from upstairs. What's going on? I went on upstairs, there's Index, I'm knocking, well, I'm knocking on his door, I'm like, hey, uh, can you guys keep it down? Index opens the door, there's M.A. Larson and like six other people drinking, and they're all playing ship pick and playing music really loud, I'm like, really? I come up the next morning because Index calls me and says, Hey, I need to get some of these bodies out of my room. <laughs> I'm just like, what? I come upstairs and there's this pile of drunk people passed out. <laughs> and one of them is Larson. I'm just like, what? I have, okay, I have met Larson three separate times. And every time he has never recognized me. Because he shows up from the moment he's in the convention. He is drinking. Till the end of the convention. So, he is drunk the whole time. So he just doesn't remember anyone. Except for a select few people. Yeah. Which is... Well, actually, nah. He probably didn't recognize uh, AC Race best when he sent them that damn email. <laughs> so, it, it, it was funny. It was really funny. Because uh, I'm sitting there and we're dragging Larson out. And then we get, like, halfway through Index's door, and I'm like, you know what, I grew up. I'm like, I'm going to the convention floor. He's like, it's six in the morning, nobody will, go oh. Uh, just leave them halfway in the hallway and then get over. At every convention I go to, I usually, I'm in bed at one, and I wake up at, like, five. I get five hours of sleep at every convention for some reason. Yeah. And it's like, I'm up before anybody else, and everybody looks at me like, I'm nuts. Except for, except for TrotCon. TrotCon, I did not sleep at all. I I had a hotel that was two miles away, and I could not be bothered to walk back to my hotel room. And I carried all my crap with me anyways. <laughs> I mean, quite literally, I paid for a hotel room I wasn't going to use. I would have been better off just sleeping. Like, I'll I, just sleep outside, you know, nothing bad will happen. Yeah. Uh... So yeah, it was it was one of those things. I was just like running into. It, I ran into this Larson quite a bit during Nightmare Nights and Dusty Cat. Snowflake, <laughs> Snowflake knows me. 
Uh, Private Stampede. Oh, is he the one who cosplays as um, Snowflake? Yes. yes. And he, he he's army engineer. Yeah. Goes around. Yeah. yeah. He knows me really well because I'm the one who goes onto his Twitter account and puts mustaches on his picture. <laughs> he knows me because I sat there at night and I'm staring at him. This is the first time we met in person. And he's playing ship pick with his wife and, you know, a couple other people. I'm just staring at him from the table away. And he looks at me and I'm like, you don't recognize me, do you? <laughs> he's like, no. And he's got a mustache and goatee. I was like, you ruined my fun. And he looks at me. He's like, no. <laughs> he's like, are you? And I pull up my badge. I'm like, yep, I am. And he's like, yeah. He's freaking, he's having a ball with that. <laughs> and he, like... You know, his, his wife's a nice person, but a, yeah. uh, was a couple of people he was hanging with, we were all playing ship pick, and, like, one of the people he was hanging with was kind of... Okay, I'm not going to lie, sometimes I don't ask, I accept that. And, you know, he, I started getting this vibe of go the fuck away. You know, and I'm like, okay, you know what? No, nope. I left. And uh, his, his wife finds me, and she's dressed as bond. So she does it in the most monotone way she can, and says, don't worry about them, you know, just because they think of you as that. And she's like, and I'm just, I'm like, and that just made my day. I got advice from Mott. <laughs> in the best way possible. <laughs> oh, good old Mott. Mod is creepy. Like, if, like, okay. Okay, she is adorable as a pony, but a tad bit creepy as a human. Yes. <laughs> Equestrian girl in those rainbow hawks when I saw her, and she just creeps me out. I was like, I don't want this kind of person to live in my house. <laughs> I was like, how does how does Pinky stand stand for this? I I don't think we. Rock candy mix. Well, um, I I don't think we can uh, judge how uh, well Pinky can think of stuff. She's not really right in the head either. Pinky is a goddess. <laughs> I, I don't want to know where you got that from. No, or, nor the only way the only way it could be I've seen how Pinky internet. can do some of the well, okay, that I've seen the internet. I, I'm not quoting something from the internet. I'm saying the only way this is my head canon is a uh, Pinky is secretly like a god, like because everything that she does, everything that she says is spot on, especially or, with the Pinky sense. Or. She just our imagination, and since we're watching it, we are pretty much imagining something in the show that doesn't exist. Larson, please tell me the answer to that one. He's not going to. He doesn't remember me. <laughs> like I said, I mean, the only way she's able to break the fourth wall is because we want her to break the fourth wall. Only, the, only re the only reason why she can play so many instruments is because we want or to play that many instruments. My head canon is that she's a god, and she supersedes Celestia and Luna. My but logical canon is saying she's just part of our imagination. Yeah. Each their own. A bit. Oh yeah. Or she was created by Discord, and we just don't know. Oh, that. she's like Discord's daughter. Nope. Damn it, Lancey. Nope. <laughs> No, oh, we already no. have screwball for that. Ha has that been proven yet? Uh, yeah, maybe in a fan service ish way or whatever. Maybe. Yes. Maybe. Oh yeah. So, uh, did you watch? Uh, like before they went into hiatus, did you watch the recent episode that they made before hiatus? Like before they went into hiatus for the summer, uh, it was a, a do princesses dream of magic sheet. Oh yes. Did you notice Derpy meowed? Yes. I was like, she's giant. She's a <laughs> kitty. <laughs> kitty, kitty, kitty. And and of course, but we have to discuss the most important thing of the episode. Princess Macintosh. Yes. Yes. Oh my god. I I saw and that and I was like, oh dear god. Yep, and a good old Sailor Moon uh, reference there. I just saw it and I was like, I was like, wow. 
I was like, does Peter New want this? Is this is this something he he just like pitched? I could I could I could just imagine Peter New walking up, going, "I want to be a princess." <laughs> <laughs> just walk up to Larson, "I want to be a princess," and Larson's like, eh, "Fandom's angry enough at me." <laughs> He's like, "Let me do it this way." <laughs> I think that might have been like a case of just Larson knew everybody was mad. He was just like, I'm just not going to deal with this anymore. I mean, you can imagine that, can't you? Probably. Fandom's mad enough. Why don't we just do this? Uh, but then again, they gave us in a whole episode that was kissing our asses. Oh, yes. Yeah. That episode was beautiful. Yes, it was. In I love especially that. Especially when they jumped a shark. Yeah, I love the juice. Yes, yes I have. I've seen it in foreign places. Yes, you saw it. Yeah. So, for some of you guys who haven't seen it, okay, you can go ahead and say it. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Alright, like, um, it was right after they technically jumped a shark, which there is actually a shark that they jump over. Who knew? And was, uh, if you look at the screen... There's going to be a little glimpse of something that doesn't really fit the color palette. So when you stop there, well, uh, you get... Is it four or five? I think there's like only five. It's five. It's the whole cat. It's the whole... It's the... Not the cast, but it's a... Uh, I think it's like Tara Strong, M.A. Larson, uh... Who was it? There was like three other people. I think Andrea Liveman was in there. Uh, you know, Pinky... Yeah. Uh, and like, I, I think it was, I, I'm not sure if Daniel Ingram was in there. Uh, probably not, because Daniel Ingram is Daniel Ingram. He mm. just does his thing, and, you know, that doesn't seem to fit. Uh, I've met the, I've met the other music producer, not, uh, I think it's like Andrew something. Yeah. I, I know, I know, I've met him at TrotCon, and me and him tried to hang out. Your battery is low. Wow! Way to be informative. Yeah, I know. I love technology. Yeah, I gotta love the fact that my computer's locked. Yep. I don't have a power saver mode on here. Why do I not have a power saver? I don't know. Power and sleep settings. Okay. Uh... 